Okay, so this one is brilliant. It's the perfect nanny and it's free to watch on YouTube. So that's an option if you don't want me to ruin it for you. If you don't, here's the rundown. This is Andrea, and she comes home to find her husband Troy at it with some other woman, so she stabs herself with a kitchen knife. Well, isn't that what most people do? No, it's not. And an unspecified time later, she's being released from this mental hospital. I must point out here, because it's important to the plot, that Andrea is obsessed with this book series called The Passion of Mandy, which looks similar to what I can only imagine Wuthering Heights might be like. Men are gentlemen, and women are ladies. As she reads these books, we're treated to some acting out of the lines she's reading. I'm afraid people will never accept me in your world. You're the most gracious, wonderful woman in Connecticut. Andrea has a subscription and gets this tripe delivered regularly. Oh, I see. On a separate note, credit to Andrea for subscribing to a service that delivers content she enjoys. You should subscribe. Yes, you should. Andrea hasn't told anyone she's getting out today. I've got a new life to start. Three months later, she's in LA and she's working at this nanny agency, but she decides to be a nanny instead. So steals the identity of Nikki Harcourt and goes to hunt for James Lewis, a widower that needs a nanny. James is a respected neurosurgeon, so she checks out a book he's written from the library. This film isn't hard to follow at all, as Andrea talks to herself, and us, throughout the whole thing. Oh yeah, she also talks to this teddy bear. I'm going to be the perfect nanny. I don't think so. She calls James and gets an interview as Nikki Harcourt. Fax me your resume and salary history. Yes! So she cuts her hair and turns up to the house. Here she meets James, who's apparently very handsome. I guess. His daughter, Fawn, who's off to college soon, and his 12-year-old son, Ben. The mum's dead, by the way. I have to say, your resume is quite good. High praise indeed. But the interview doesn't go according to plan. James explains that he prefers the last woman he saw, Beth, because she speaks fluent Spanish and can teach Ben. Andrea clocks Beth's address on her resume and goes round to her house that evening pretending she's a friend of a neighbour who needs to borrow her phone. Beth invites her in and this happens. I can't take these spoiled rich kids forever, you know. Don't worry, you won't have to. I should confirm at this point that Beth is somehow dead. Anyway, so now she's got the job. Nikki fits in well with the Lewis family and gets to go around smelling and feeling James's stuff and go into his room while he sleeps. Sleep well, my love. We are one lucky family. Beg to differ. She now sees James as the ideal man, like one of the characters in The Passion of Mandy. I'm not sure what's going on at James's work, but there's this guy called Conrad who wants James to fail. And this is Julia, James's girlfriend. Andrea didn't know about Julia, and this has put a real spanner in the works. Fawn hates Julia, because she's an American teenager in a film, and she's not her real mommy. Andrea deliberately cuts herself, and Julia takes her to the hospital. In the car, Julia gets a call from someone called Stephen, and arranges dinner with him. So Andrea assumes it's Julia's other boyfriend. The next evening, James and Julia are off to a party, and Andrea hears them planning a weekend away. Fawn comes into her room and sees she has her dad's book on her shelves. Who's Andre McBride? Oh, she's a um, friend of mine I'd stayed with for a couple of days. <laughs> You're in trouble. This book is way overdue. Oh. So that's that dealt with. Andrea tells Fawn about James and Julia's weekend plans, and Fawn is livid, because remember, Julia's not her real mommy. Okay, now we're at this old woman's house. It's Mrs. McBride, Andrea's mum, and Troy, Andrea's husband, is on the phone. Apparently, Troy gives Mrs. McBride money to keep track of Andrea's whereabouts, but he's angry because she never found out that she left the mental hospital. You stupid bitch, now I'm going to have to go and find her. That's nice. Back at the Lewis house, and Fawn is bollocking her dad for planning a weekend with Julia. I can't believe you do that to mum. Clearly, Fawn wants her dad to be miserable for the rest of his life. Anyway, Andrea tells Fawn about the phone conversation she heard Julia having with Stephen in the car. So Fawn starts following Julia and sees her hugging the Stephen character. What a slut. But of course, it turns out to be nothing. He's decidedly gay. Oops. So as that plan's failed, I suppose Andrea needs to take matters into her own hands. <laughs> Problem solved. After the funeral, James and Andrea hug and Fawn clocks from her face that she's into her dad. This is a problem for Fawn because of course Andrea is also not her real mommy. 
Now, when Andrea reads her book, she pictures herself and James as the characters. The swans were on the water that day, as I recall. I knew at that moment that I was in love. For fuck's sake. Anyway, while the Lewis family are out, Andrea is going through James's dead wife's dresses and pretending she's James's new wife. Fawn is angry again. Yeah, I've heard the spiel. At dinner, James is complaining to Fawn about Conrad, as Conrad is trying to force James out of the hospital. The reason is irrelevant. Nikki tells James that she suspects Andrea is after him, and that something weird is going on. There's just something weird about her. All nannies are weird. Are they? Okay. Anyway, James dismisses this as crazy talk, and they decide to focus on Conrad instead. But they don't need to worry about that, because Andrea has tracked him down on a night off and stabbed him. So that's the end of Conrad. He's a bad man who got what he deserved. So Fawn is now even more suspicious, so she does some more digging into Nikki Harcourt's past. At the same time, Troy and her mum have an idea on how to find her. She'd never stop reading these. Smart. Fawn's investigation is going nowhere because everyone she calls has only good things to say about Andrea's alter ego, Nikki Harcourt. It's Andrea's birthday on Friday and James suggests the family takes her out to dinner, but Andrea arranges for the kids to be out so that she can be alone with James. Tomorrow, James. It's the day our dreams all come true. Fawn remembers the library book incident from earlier and goes to the library that Andrea got it from to get her old address. But looks like Troy has found her first and he's taking her home. But she's getting good at this, so now Troy is no longer going to be a problem. One more time. Fawn has arrived at Andrea's house, but Mrs. McBride pretends she doesn't know who she's talking about. Fawn suspects she's not being honest when she clocks the Passion of Mandy poster in the house. So later that night, when Mrs. McBride is away, she breaks back in and sees a picture of Andrea and works out that she's a crazy person. Back at the Lewis house, James and Andrea are about to go out for a birthday dinner, but James gets a call from work and he needs to go in immediately, so they agree to have dinner at home later. While James is out at work, Andrea's mum comes to the house and starts suggesting that she gets some money out of this deal that she's got going on. So Andrea deals with her. <laughs> when James gets back, Andrea goes for it with James, but he's not interested. This drives Andrea wild, so she knocks him out. Fawn has come home to warn her dad that Andrea is mental, and they start fighting. Andrea is incredibly bad at this, considering all the practice she's had. Anyway, James has managed to free himself downstairs, and comes up to talk Andrea down. Then there's this scene where Andrea imagines James as someone from the passion of Mandy. Come into my arms, my love. And that's done it. So Andrea is back at the mental hospital, pretending she lives in a fancy world and insisting the nurse calls her Mrs. Lewis. Brilliant. Until next time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and check out this other video. Thank you.